Hello and welcome to more Nerdy Rodent Geekery. Today I am having a look at Stargandada. Why is it called Stargandada? Well, because you don't need a data set at all. You can just use Clip to train it. Oh, fantastic. So let's scroll down and see what is going on with this. Clip guided domain adaptation of image generators. Can a generative model be trained to produce images from a specific domain guided by text prompt only without seeing any images? In other words, can an image generator be trained blindly? And the answer is, yes, it can. Yes, it can. And here is a little picture. So here we've got a generator that is frozen. That's your photograph. We've got a generator here that you're training using directional clip loss, and you're turning the photograph into an anime painting. Excellent stuff. Excellent stuff. Now, there is, of course, a Google Colab there. So if you want to open up that Google Colab, you pop into the Google Colab, click play on everything. You will want to change some of these settings here, like the photo and the sketch, and you, you can pick a few different models, FFHQ, Cat Dog Church, you know, all the standard Stargan stuff. So, yep, there's the uh, the Colab notebook ready to go, ready to play with if you want to. I am running it locally, of course, because, well, that's, that's just the sort of person I am. So let's keep on going and see what goes on here. So generator domain adaptation, we've got a few examples there, and they've got a few more examples on their project page. As you can see there, we've got people converted into drawings and the Mona Lisa style things and some bears and some new cars seem to be converted into old cars there. And right. OK, so let's have a look at the setup. Right. So we've got the uh, official implementation of Clip and the Rosenality PyTorch implementation of Stargan 2. So that's the one before Stargan 2 ADA. Right. But at least it is in PyTorch, at least. Now you will, like I'm using as well, need Anaconda and a pre-trained Stargan 2 Rosenality PyTorch version. Uh, you can download one there, that's the FFHQ version, or you can also download some models from there and then convert it with the provided script. Uh, you can also convert the Stargan 2 ADA PyTorch ones uh, with a, another script over here, digging into the, uh, the issues there. You can see issue number 206, and uh, Derek Schultz has written there. Justin Pinkney wrote one that works for 1024 and 512 and there's a little link there export weights and that works quite nicely i'll sort of dig into that in a little bit but uh, first of all you will of course want to set up your new environment now i happen to be using an old environment anyway my old stargan 2 ada pytorch this one works quite nicely i already have clip installed with it anyway because i've been using style clip and things like that but uh, if you want to set one up from scratch there it is, Conda Create minus minus name, whatever you want to call it. For example, Stylegan NADA. And then, of course, don't forget to activate it. Conda Activate Stylegan NADA. Now, then you can do these bits. Conda Install if you want to. I can personally vouch for the PyTorch uh, version of PIP. That, that works nicely. But yes, you can Conda Install PyTorch as well, version 1.7.1 1 with whichever CUDA Toolkit version you want. I am using CUDA Toolkit 11. There's a couple more things to install in PIP, including the OpenAI bit. So there you go. That's pretty much exactly the same as you got there. You can just copy paste that, change your CUDA version, and you have got your environment set up and ready to go. Now, in order to run the script, you will need to go into the ZSS GAN directory. So don't forget to CD into there. And there I am, GitHub style GAN NADA ZSS GAN. Now, there's a there's a few options as you can see here quite a few options size batch sample at the directory and all that sort of thing so uh yeah be sure to to set those to your requirements i just turned it into a little into a little script here where i keep most of the things the same anyway and just change a few now size 1024 batch 8 you can go quite high on the batch i got up to batch size 16 and that was using uh 22 gig with a size there of 1024 sample the number of samples you want it to generate so it generates a number of images for you and uh, how often you want it to generate those then uh, iterations of course how long do you want it to run for a little bit of a learning rate if you want to save a checkpoint same as saving the images i set mine nice and high because it generates quite large checkpoints 350 meg so uh, yeah I, I tend to uh, just test first before i do any checkpoints to see if the images come out all right uh, and then if it's something i like then uh, yeah, I, I can save a checkpoint for it. And uh, and there you go. There's the, the source text and the target text. So source text in this particular instance 
is a portrait painting because that's that's what these ones are and uh I'm, I'm changing it there to a portrait painting with a myriad of bright neon colors and my output there is the output directory so i've got a whole bunch of different outputs i'll show you what they all look like so there you go pretty simple size batch what you want it to look like input output and uh, you've got the new clip model in there as well it's even got the b16 so uh, nice and up to date. So let, let's have a look at some of these things and uh, and what's going on. So that that one I was just looking at there. So as you can see, checkpoints. I haven't got any because I don't I don't want to save that big file. And uh, you've got the args there, the JSON format. So as you can see there, that's the uh, all the arguments you use to create that. So if you're, you're not sure how you created it in the in the past, then look at the arguments there, and you can see. So here we go, the samples. So zero 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 is always the uh, the first one so this is the the unmodified portraits so that's what they look like to start with and then after 50 50 iterations as you can see they are starting to get their bright neon colors all the way up to the last one there 300 so yeah that that works that works quite nicely and uh, you can you can do lots of other things as well so there's the cartoon there we go there's cartoon started off with four now the, the cartoon one i thought was quite weird the the eyes it likes doing things with the eyes there so the same sort of thing you go all the way up to 300 and uh yeah so you can see sometimes the uh the lower iterations are a little bit a little bit better i prefer the 50 there to the uh to the 300 i think but those those also look quite peculiar <coughs> uh, yes smile i did i did quite like the smile the smile i thought turned out very well uh, even at just 50 iterations so there it is you ready for the smile oh. <laughs> <laughs> don't they look daft and uh, and there after 100 a, a slightly more exaggerated smile with a little bit of hair change so yeah the, the smile i think works works really well uh surreal let's, let's have a quick look at surreal there's uh, surreal now surreal i wasn't so happy with but it, it still looks a little bit weird the the eyes go a bit weird don't they look at those eyes that's it's yeah it's nightmare fuel isn't it it's nightmare fuel but talking about nightmare fuel, let's let's have a look at some vampires. Vampire. So there's there's a vampire to start with, and as you see, that's 50. Now this one I did all the way up to 600, so you can see what happens if you train it for a long time. There's 150, 300, and then all the way up to 600. Some rather perfect looking vampires there. Yes, rather nice looking teeth on those vampires. So that's that's great fun. Now if you want to go really weird. So here I've gone a surreal vampire cat. So it's a, it's a little bit out of domain. So you get your normal vampire teeth, but then you also get the nose, whiskers, and then slightly later you start to get the ears. And there, as you can see, I've gone all the way up to 700. They, uh, they do start to get a bit more similar, a bit samey if you do the iterations for too long. But uh, but there, they're cat, cat vampires. Yeah, they're, they're quite strange. And uh, what... You can't you can't have a, a a vampire without a werewolf, can you? So there's there's the werewolf version as well. There's uh, 50 iterations, and uh, as that one goes along, it becomes more and more werewolf-like. So there you go, 400 iterations of werewolf. Mmm, nice, nice. <laughs> right. So if you uh, if you do want to change your Stargen to ADA PyTorch networks, so the the slightly more modern ones. Uh, then there is a little script in there. So there you go. So you can convert this one. Justin Pinkney wrote the script, export weights. You can run that, that will convert it, but it does only seem to work with 1024 size pickles, unfortunately. I tried converting a 512 pickle with that script, and uh, while it worked in Rosenality, I could generate images from it in the 512 size. It didn't, unfortunately, uh, work with this Stargan Nada train script. So uh, at the moment, I can only get it to work with 1024. If you can get um, 512 pickles converted from the official Stargan 2 ADA PyTorch, I would very much like to know how you do that. Uh, but uh, but there you go. There is Stargan 2 Nada. All sorts of fun that you can have with your pickles there, assuming you've got some and you can convert them. Anyway, that's it for now. Rodent out.